Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Stupid Gun Myths. I'm Mike B, coming at you from Mommy's Basement. Yes, I'm still here. Um, yeah, today it's going to be a fun little video. This is going to be more of a me fighting opinions with my opinion video, but I'm going to use a little bit of logic and kind of reasoning and common sense to uh, debunk this myth that goes around. I think it's a myth, um, and it's just an ignorant blanket statement, so we're going to just get right into it. So, as you can see from the title, the moist nuggets, they had garbage rods, and sweet Jesus, they shape for a reason. Well, okay, let's get into that part. So they're cheap for a reason. Yeah, well, they were cheap for a reason. Um, now, that's a different story. They're 300 bucks for a standard refurb 9130, but hey, who am I? Um, anyway, so they were cheap for the longest time because we had a steady supply of them coming in from Ukraine, Belarus, you know, other countries that were basically, these have been sitting in warehouses since the end of the Second World War, waiting for World War III to happen in nice refurbished condition. They were checked out every couple of years just to make sure. And then they were sold off after the collapse of the Soviet Union in large numbers because what the hell are they going to need them for? And they need money more than they need these guns right now. So they make excellent hunting rifles. So, hey, the Americans will buy them. The Canadians will buy them. And, yeah, these things were like 60 to $80 for the longest time because... There were about 60 million Mosin Nagant rifles made. 60 million. That's a, that's a pretty substantial number. That's enough to arm uh, a good chunk of Europe. Uh, every person has one. Um, and 60 million is a, is a pretty uh, decent number of rifles made. Um, they're not all going to be the 9130 like we have up here. They're not all going to be the M44. They're going to be, we're talking the M91 through the 9159 and all that stuff. But still, 60 million of the same platform, that's a lot of freaking rifles. So that's why they were really cheap. Now, here's where the opinion part comes in. Some people just do not like the action. They don't like the bolt, which I'll, I'll, I'll give you that, okay? There are a lot smoother kind of more user-friendly options than the Mosin Nagant 9130, i.e. the Carcano, or Carcano, whatever you Italian guys always, oh, you're saying it wrong. I know, I don't speak Italian, sorry. Um, anyway, so I think the Carcano is a better platform. I think, obviously, the, the um, Gewehr 98, or even, the, even a Mauser Model 1891 Argentine is a more solid platform, in my opinion, for being user-friendly. Now, as far as the strength, the reliability, and all that stuff, these are on par with any other rifle that was designed in the late 1800s, which most of them are pretty damn good, the bolt-action rifles that were adopted. There's a reason these are still being used over 100 years after its inception in places like Syria, Africa, parts of Asia. They're still being used in a civilian capacity in most of the world as well. Um, people like to sporterize these. People like to keep them in original configuration. So if you just automatically use a blanket statement because you might not prefer this action over you know other actions that are out there, and you call it a garbage rod, you know, i.e., we all know who says that, um, you, you make yourself sound extremely fucking ignorant with a blanket statement. You could just say, yeah, I'm not a fan of the Mosin Nagant, the 91 platform. Um, I think there are better platforms out there. But to just obvious, or automatically assume and, and, and kind of insinuate that this is a piece of shit because they're so cheap and, you know, the action can be a little bit rough and... Sure, there are, you know, more user-friendly rifles out there, so it's a garbage drive because I don't like it. That's just, that's stupid, it's unfair, it's just ignorant, and yeah, I'm here to say that. That's my opinion on any platform, like the Carcano. You, you had one bad experience, or you know, you heard it from somebody, so you blanket statement an entire firearm, it, it's just, it makes you sound ignorant, okay? Ignorance is just, a, that's a perfect example of ignorance, just saying shit that you don't really know about, you don't have any, you're not really an authority on it, but... You claim to be an expert. I know, I know a lot of you are going to be like, you do that all the time. Well, I never claim to be an expert. That's the difference. So anyway, yeah, the, the Mosin Nagant 9130 or 91 action, it's... Here's the thing about most Russian slash Soviet weapons, right, in general. They might not look pretty. They might be a little bit rough um, on the user, like the action-wise and all that stuff. They might be... You know, the, the caliber is okay and all that stuff. They might not just be like the most streamlined high cost, high production value, like user friendly, beautiful looking, feeling everything rifles, but they work. Um, I've owned obviously quite a damn few of these over the years. <clears throat> and I, I only had a problem with one because of the ammunition. Weird recurring theme on this series. And it was the 1950s Polish lacquer coated stuff that was, I was firing it rapidly. So it was melting the 
melted the lacquer, and not on this rifle, but on my first 9130. It was melting the, the lacquer on the casing, and it was just a bitch to get the bolt open. Now, I use steel case, the copper-coated steel case stuff, and I've never had a problem with a with a Mosin Nagant, ever. Um, granted, the bolts can be finicky on them. Um, there's Sometimes they get pretty rough, and you got to use like a mallet or something to get them open, which, okay, you could say that that's a design flaw, but... I really think it's it's very rare that you find that because I've owned I've probably had about ninety or so um, Mosin Nagants come through my hands you know over the years of collecting and trading and stuff, and out of those I think I had issues legitimately with the bolts on one or two, I can't remember I think there was a yeah anyway, so that's that's the only issues that I've had personally now. I would say that sure that's that's a subjective thing because that rate is pretty damn low it's like one or two percent tops. And, you know, any kind of rifle, you're going to have issues on a subjective basis. I've had issues with um, 98 Mauser platforms. I've had issues with the K98. Um, I've had issues with, um, the hell, with an Enfield, with a number four mark, or number three mark, number one mark three. Jesus, had a little dexic moment there. Yeah, I had, I had some major issues with one of those, and that's one of the, you know, most world-renowned platforms. So, yeah, if you're just going to sit there and call this platform a garbage rod, I hate that fucking term, um... You need to go back to the drawing board and stop filling people for your opinions as, you know, and displaying it as a fact. Um, again, my opinion is there are better actions out there, I think, um, that are more smooth and whatever and more user-friendly. However, these work phenomenally. Uh, if you've ever messed around with finished Mosins, like this one's a finished captured Mosin 9130, but I'm talking like an M28, M2830, M39. Those are some of the nicest rifles. They're... The actions are a little bit smoother, I think just because they're used more. But uh, I should have had that in the video. I should have featured that in the video. But this is basically what people are talking about, the, the Soviet ones or the Russian ones. That, you know, they're, they're pieces of junk because they made so many of them and they're dirt cheap and whatever. Yeah, not not the case at all, guys. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my uh, stupid gun myth. My views are down, so i got to pander to the, uh, the crowd of people that like hearing about these myths. And this is one that has been brought up in the comments, too, and I've actually heard this quite a bit. I mean, everybody has. Here's the thing, if you don't like the rifle, and you don't like the platform, and you think it's a garbage rod, don't fucking buy it. End of story. Like, Jesus Christ. But also, don't be going around spewing your ignorance and, you know, making other people who might not know or have experienced one of these think the same shit and perpetuate the same bullshit until they've experienced it for themselves. So, anyway, that's just my advice, my opinion, and, you know, just trying to use a little bit of logic to do that. And I, I don't like blanking statements with anything, really. I really don't. Uh, I try to not do them myself. Um, it's easier said than done when you're not paying attention and not really giving a shit. But uh, yeah, in general, don't say something's garbage or, or worthless. You know, this applies to human beings as well. So if you kind of catch my drift on there, you're just as ignorant for making blanket statements about people because you have one bad experience or you heard from somebody. It's the same concept. Ignorance, it's, it's everywhere. Anyway, wow, this one might actually be under 10 minutes. First one in the series, or maybe a second. Who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what you think. Um, I, again, it's not to start a pissing match. I, I, I don't care. If you don't like them, that's fine. I, I, I understand why you don't like them. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And if you do like them, if you've got good experiences with them, let me know. Um, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully, maybe if you're doing this yourself, you kind of take a step back and look at it and maybe stop doing it. But that's kind of the whole point of the video. All right. Anyway, let's get some discussion going in the comments. Let me know what you think. And I appreciate you watching. Um, yeah, if you check out the description, there's a link to my Patreon in there, which helps support the channel. I've got a lot of really good patrons, a lot of good support going on the channel that's allowed me to get some really neat stuff that I'll be making videos on probably this week. So I appreciate that. And if you check that out and consider becoming a supporter, it's a dollar a month, 12 bucks a year, buys you in to support getting ammunition for these kind of things and other props for videos. And, uh, yeah, also, if you do five bucks a month or more level, you get access to my Discord server, which I'm on pretty much all the time. So, yeah, check that out. And, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll end the video here. Uh, let me know what you think again. And we'll see you on the next episode of Stupid Gun Myths. That's all I've got. Fuckity bye.